then uh, we'll, uh, sure, sure, if yeah. you want, we can extend that in inner dimension because I have to, uh, you know, sure, sure, get yeah. into my yeah, yeah, yeah. daily routine. So quickly, uh, uh, let's start afresh. Um, uh, Mindspeak and I run YouTube channel uh, wherein which I'll be uploading this conversation. And um, please let us know a little bit very quickly about yourself and then we'll get into discussion right away. Thank you. Yeah, I have a background in computer science. Uh, I understand, uh, you know, some of science also and all. So essentially, like, you know, trying to understand the nature of reality and uh, the mechanism that we kind of, uh, the, the mechanism with which we kind of work in the world. Uh, not so much from the physics part of it, but more from, like, you know, what we call as ultimate reality, which is, uh, uh, which is to kind of break the rules that we have made, even in understanding science, because science uh, usually depends upon pattern matching. Uh, you know, observe pattern match and then like map it to mathematics and things like that. But the fact that mathematics exists a priori, the logic exists a priori, the perceptions exist a priori, uh, then we need to think in totally different way. And usually uh, this topic falls in, in that category, actually. We need to go to identity beyond the physicality that we assume to be the identity, uh, the mechanism of identity. So I think we'll discuss some of these points today. Sure, sir, sure. So, like, uh, the, uh, where do you think this uh, this everything actually starts and why, why do you think we build an identity? Is it the process of survival or is it a, um, what do you say, is it a necessity? I think it's a necessity, isn't it? Like, uh, because or if you don't have an identity, we cannot uh, uh, protect uh, our, our you know, physical entity as such, correct? Yeah, but th that has come much later, right? I mean, in the whole uh, reality, uh, it is a point of view, like when you, uh, you know, when you, uh, let's say, for example, a concept of thief, for example. Now, you cannot just like that say concept of thief unless you define that there is something called ownership. And now when the ownership is forcibly taken away by somebody else, then we call such a person as thief, right? The thief cannot exist before the ownership can exist, right? So in that sense, the identity, if we define it after like, you know, we have seen this reality the way it is, then of course, it's not going to yield as much results, right? Because the... Uh, identity is uh, in a way embedded in, in in the way the life has happened so we need to look at like you know exactly why the life has happened in this particular way only so one of the ways to reason out is that like you know that uh, see essentially what is identity it is a, uh, it is a appreciation of reality from a single point of view right um, uh, from a, from a particular like you know point of view in which like you know you are able to uh, limit yourself to the filter that that identity creates and with which you are going to like you know interpret the information you know enjoy the information so to say and so on and so on so in a much larger context uh, when we define like you know about the nature of reality as non-dual and like you know the uh, the thing right i mean the advaita kind of philosophy so essentially what we are saying here is that you know only by you know by limiting yourself by filtering then you can uh, you know uh, you have a point of view or you you kind of enjoy that reality in a way which is different than how you would be enjoying earlier a simple logical example that can be given is like, you know, a king cannot experience what a beggar is unless he actually becomes a beggar, which means he has to come down to the level that he doesn't own anything. And then, then only he can understand how the life of beggar is and like, you know, what kind of challenges are there or even how, what kind of joys are there because there is absolutely no responsibility in beggar, right, compared to what a king is. But if you are always the king right from beginning, then you will not have opportunity to enjoy that particular point of view. So in the ultimate reality, uh, you know, uh, identity is a basis for experience at the end of the day. That's how one should see that. I agree. So do you, do you see there are two kinds of identities? One, a psychological identity, uh, which uh, design, which enables our uh, existence um, in in this physical reality or, uh, or assumed, whatever you want to call it. And second is the one which actually identifies uh, the life as an entity like life itself is is an identity right because there are life processes happening within us or they're happening for certain purpose i mean uh, i don't know if i'm making sense here so do you think there are two kinds of things happening within us uh, one which we assume it is second one which is naturally which exists which you just said a few minutes ago yeah but then uh, then we'll have to understand the purpose right i mean the control let's say that we have a body physical body now the body may have certain purpose like it enables you to go here and there you know receive all the information from outside and so on and so on but the body itself is made up of trillions of cells now as seen from every cell it has no concept of going here and there and so on and so on it is totally to the service of the body so some very interesting thing is happening here right i mean simultaneously there are two totally different levels of purposes right 
as seen from the cell its purpose is totally totally localized only to itself and it has its own identity it has to like you know divide it has to do carry out so many different functionality uh, I, but then like it doesn't even know that it is serving a higher purpose and then there is a bigger purpose of the body and that way like you know when you extend into the psychological reality uh, the psychological identity is quite real in the sense that it has a certain purpose but it doesn't really stop there right then we have to go even beyond your own so called identity even covering like you know maybe the whole of earth maybe the whole of like you know the reality that we perceive right so where do we kind of say that this is where uh, identity is there and it's not there kind of thing right okay so the interesting part that is happening is that we seem to be present somewhere in this whole chain of identity so right now we are present in our mind which is a identity of its own type right i mean it's like a certain identity uh, but then like you know if the body starts giving a lot of pain like some disease is there or whatever then you cannot spend your time in your mind uh, and doing the other things in the world because the body will require your attention and now you are more identified with the body meaning like you know you'll be like you know uh, taking care of the body for far more amount of time than is necessary so in that sense you know the you seems to be going you know at least in theory at to any level of identity that you can identify with you can probably go to a cellular level also you know if you really want to though nobody seems to have experimented with those kind of things so the interesting question for us is like you know that uh, that that seems to be a choice that the identity even the psychological identity is acquired meaning it's like you know a knowledge base which is uh, modifiable and therefore it can like you know add the knowledge remove the knowledge and so on and so on and somewhere in that knowledge base there is a self self uh, uh, identity right? i mean self concept what i think i am right <clears throat> and that particular self concept is itself uh, something which we call as ego or something and uh, that uh, that powered by the capability of freedom or capability of like you know being able to at least do small controls here and there with your legs hands and whatever your influence in society is for example that seems to have a reality of its own and that is something that we really should explore here because uh, the taking on the external identities like for example academician or a scientist or like you know a politician that seems to be very easy to like you know take and also leave it also right we are not forever identified with the external identities but the psychological identity that what i think i am seems to be there right from the birth till our at least till our death before because we don't know what happens after the death so that particular thing as to what is the uh, what is who am i or what am i when i say i what should it mean what does that really consist of that seems to be a very valid question in when we kind of go in this particular way <laughs> well wow, you kind of st- that's amazing so um, uh, kanada did enquire about uh, the you know the identity at that you know at, at level of atom as well right so oh my god so when you look at this that way like each and every cell within our body has a a uh, certain purpose attached to it and and it actually does it and it doesn't even understand it's serving a higher purpose that makes a lot of sense and uh, and when you uh, extrapolate it to the level of cosmos it it actually I mean I, at least in my level of understanding i think it kind of replicates to the level of cosmos as well so it makes sense in that level also so the fun part out here is where where do we lie in between the, uh, in this from the from the cell to that of the cosmos where are we in the middle and we kind of adopt certain ideologies and try to uh, beat our own with those ideologies and say okay this guy is this this that guy is this and all this kind of stuff happening within us wow so how uh, do you think all of these are false and uh, no, then why, the if they are to, false why do you think no i think the way yeah. to look at it is very simple whatever you can drop drop because it's not going to help in analysis right if i acquire certain identity and i know i can drop it uh, at least in theory i know i don't have to be troubled by it or whatever uh, right uh, even though one of the aspect is that like you know whatever identity we acquire let's say i am a politician for example then i am totally bound by the thinking but the very thinking changes because i am a politician because the brain now gets tuned to the way the politician thinks right like how do i acquire lots of people for example now in that process when you create a objective for the mind and now here we are talking about the nature of the mind here right when you create a objective for the mind that mind knows that that objective is fulfilled by doing these these kind of activities and it will kind of make you do those activities even without analyzing whether that activity is actually good or bad in a much bigger context only in the context of that identity that uh, action seems to be good and you end up doing those activities even though when you leave that identity suddenly the same activity uh, will become meaningless not just meaningless it may even become like you know Uh, you may even feel oh why did i even do that kind of activity and things it is somewhat like saying when i drink alcohol i may do activities which i regret after the nasha goes away kind of thing right so the identity controls your actions 
and that identity sometimes like uh, you know goes in different different directions and also you can come back you can drop that identity and then analyze your actions from different uh, identities that you acquired so one of the ways to understand about the identity itself is first to realize that you know we don't have to worry about the identities which we can take and then drop them also the only important thing there is to realize that there is a freedom that is inherently there to drop the identity because uh, uh, it is not a given kind of a thing right uh, yes but but the that... question is but but the question mm-hmm. is like um, um uh, can we actually drop the identities i mean the, uh, and why do you think it's a freedom uh, or a choice for that matter because um uh, no, like the, the, the reason why i can decide not to become a po- uh, drop the politician at least in theory not that he is going to drop at least for this analysis right. he can drop right <laughs> that way i'm saying okay so so now so, what is left uh, now let's say that i can drop the acquired identities and still there is certain identity which i cannot drop i know i cannot drop because i believe that i am like some something or somebody right even like you know without becoming somebody in the world right so that identity is something we have to investigate where is that identity or what is the basis of that identity what makes us like you know hold on to the uh, knowledge that we acquire about ourselves and even more interesting question uh, let's say that like you know you, you have some medical problem and suddenly you forget uh, who you are or what you are like your your past basically then what really happens to such a person uh, maybe medically we have such examples we can actually look at that also right yes so what, what... So i think it's it's all starts uh, uh in the process of of life right because a baby once she's once he once it is out of the mother's womb it immediately starts crying at least that's a normal process i did not cry when i was out i was so lazy to cry it seems my mom told me <laughs> but then uh, basically baby does cry uh, that's the life's process so i so why am i bringing that in because at a physical level its body recognizes itself it it has it recognizes pain it recognizes hunger it recognizes certain emotions within it maybe it doesn't tag itself to any of the identities but then it it does right it does understand it's a body so the life process itself is rooted in the identity maybe that is the reason we we tend to hang on to it irrespective of uh, our knowledge level and we kind of represent ourselves with the knowledge knowledge which we acquire knowledge of uh, and then we say this is the finite and none none <laughs> nothing else is nothing else is actually and then and try to uh, p- pitch our against uh, sorry pitch our uh, identity against other identities and create a hell out of this beautiful planet so but what what is your take this is my understanding is it wrong or right uh, so so i think then we have to look into what experiencing is right because uh, only after you start to have experiences then the identity starts to come so first there is a basic experiencing happening and somehow that experiencing leads you to have an identity isn't it yes sir, but so, then experience the experiencing the experiences again from certain identity which you have acquired right yeah that is you understand what i mean part, like right because the identity then modifies your experiencing and the experiencing will add to your identity so it's like a ball <laughs> which rolls and starts gathering the mass right whatever they call ah, that correct correct see i think identity is more like this sir so when i was a kid i used to play with magnet uh, when whenever speakers go bad i used to remove those magnet and put it in the mud and collect all tiny tiny iron particles get that uh, magnet to home and uh, iron particles to paper and play around with it so i think the process we are like a magnet we keep uh, you know acting nonsense around us and or maybe it's not nonsense basically it's it, it makes sense it's made sense to us because we acquired it ourselves through our uh, nature and natural experience and we call it as our magnet which we are has a, has accumulated uh, iron particles around it and and that's that's i mean those iron particles are constitution of our identity Do, i think um, uh, we, we we then <laughs> presumed that's our identity everything falls apart at the time of death for sure because when i've i've seen my uh, you know uh, grandfathers both of them have died and uh, the way they were living all those days was amazing but uh, as uh, on the death bed uh, there was just mere life same like uh, a baby uh, a newborn baby who came out of the mother's womb there is no difference so i think that's the that's the state of that's the pure magnet which we are and we keep accumulating it calling our identity we fight for it we we put others in their boxes and say okay you belong to this box to me you belong to that box and then um, judge up uh, judge them based on those things uh, and this is all hap- I, th- i think life itself happens that way right i mean if you see the same thing happening in animals also foxes also do the same thing hyenas do the same thing all social animals do the same thing and uh, non social so, uh, non social animals like tiger bears they mark their territories 
I think um, this is how the planet, this is how life actually works. So there is nothing wrong in it. At the same time, understanding it and being cognizant of this fact that this is happening this way, maybe that will help us be, being a better human being, being more empathetic, being more uh, adaptive to the situations. But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for the monologue. <laughs> Just thinking out a lot. No, no, that's correct. See, the, the thing is, the questions which arise are essentially, as far as science is concerned, the identity is the offshoot of a physicality, right? But what I'm basically trying to say is that that there is certain capability, certain freedom with which you can actually, you know, uh, change the knowledge base that you have uh, purely by your will. Now, right now, that going into free will and all is a different issue. But f for a moment, let's say that like, you know, uh, it's like an actor, right? I mean, the actor, when he starts to act, right, he has to get into that character, which means like, you know, he has to forget himself and he will actually have to get into that uh, the character and then like, you know, uh, and then he, of course, does the acting. Now, what I've heard is that when that uh, uh, depth is there, a person who is like really good actor, he goes into that character. Apparently, it takes quite some time for him to come back to normalcy. You know, because once you enter into that character, you'll start performing. Like how, like, you know, uh, uh, totally you become that character, totally changing what you were earlier than compared to this particular uh, uh, actor, right? Now, that freedom is there for you to become somebody. Uh, you know, and now this characteristic of becoming somebody is something totally aided by the body as well as your internal systems and so on. In case of acting, it seems to be very simple because it's a very straightforward process and at the end of the day, they complete the acting and they come back to normalcy, right? But there's a hint of like, you know, the processes which are there, how the identity then like, you know, affects this thing. Now, why I'm saying this is because this also flows into what we call as spirits and all, right? So when somebody like, you know, gets a spirit, for example, the identity totally changes for such a person. No, not many would have probably experienced it, but uh, at least uh, I have experienced it. And uh, it is actually quite common, usually in the rural areas and so on. Uh, one should uh, basically experience that, right? Or somebody like, you know, may experience a hist historical kind of moments and all, where essentially he is not his own old self. He has gone into like, you know, totally very different uh, kind of reality in a way. Either the assumed reality or like, you know, uh, on, or whatever. Uh, even in some psychological cases that I personally have experienced with some of my friends and all, uh, where like some failed love affairs and all, suddenly the person starts to interpret things in an extremely negative manner, as if everything is against him and things like that, right? So somewhere the brain seems to be like, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, so imagine it's like more like, let's say that, uh, you know, there are different buckets, uh, you know, in the ground and the water can collect in these buckets and you are normally in one of the buckets, but with some like energy and then you kind of get out and then you get to enter into a new bucket and suddenly you find yourself thinking and like, you know, feeling in a totally as a different identity in the same body. And that seems to be happening, you know, and I, because I've experienced it, uh, I know the kind of power that is there within a body-mind, right? Uh, now, this is like, you know, going beyond our normal way of understanding identity, because what I'm basically saying is that uh, that uh, that capability of what you want to become uh, seems to be hidden in the very nature of uh, our own self and all. So something seems to be at your service to kind of move you to a new identity and all, if you really so desire. Uh, even I think, uh, you know, there are commentaries on like, you know, the meditation. So some of the meditation techniques, you know, like, for example, you, you meditate on becoming a bhais, uh, you know, then you will actually become a bhais and you will actually forget yourself, you know, and then only somebody else has to come out, you know, make you back, come back and then like, you know, come back and make you what you were earlier kind of a thing. I think Osha has described in one of the books, some of these things, right? So there is a very interesting aspect to our lives, which has not been explored sufficiently, in my opinion, you know. So, uh, let oh, me ask you a very... Uh, sorry, 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 go ahead. Okay. No, I just wanted to complete that, uh, that sure, line sure, of thought. Sure, sure. That, uh, because maybe like in you know, experimentation in this worldly ways is a bit difficult because uh, maybe like, you know, somebody may experiment when uh, when they do the past life regression, for example, and all. Because then they take up the identities that were there hidden in the past kind of a thing, right? That's probably safe and one can truly experiment with that. Uh, even in hypnotism also, maybe it's possible. Uh, but in my opinion, it is more interesting that you go to the source rather than, you know, taking different identities. You actually can take identity of a non-identity, for example. You know, then what happens? Then certain, those those processes are kind of pretty well defined in Indian philosophy. And uh, that is what we normally call a spirituality, actually. Uh, and then, like, you know, then we can probably discuss something more about, like, you know, what it means to be uh, unidentified or not having an identity and what is the po potential power of that and things like that. Beautiful. I am in line with everything what you have said, except in two cases. One is uh, uh, the spirit thing, and the second is in uh, with the uh, the past life regression. 
um i expect <laughs> i went to this and i'm not laughing out i'm sorry i didn't want didn't mean to like uh, build it a little but i i did experiment with the past life regression and just out of curiosity and i i was told i was a, a buddhist monk in thailand uh, <laughs> with particular features i mean uh, that to female monk so uh, anyways that that can be told in any way right so maybe i am i don't but that doesn't matter to me anymore if if, if it is or yes or no i don't know but uh, it could have been made up story also same is case with the uh, spirits so my question would be can we adopt any identity which is which we are not aware of let's say the example which you gave uh, you know adopting the identity of a buffalo or any animal for that matter hypnotism does that so can you adopt an identity which you don't which you are not aware of let's say um uh predator you know, i don't know maybe i'm wrong um, an alien uh, from an alien planet which doesn't exist unless you don't know the qualities can you adopt that identity so the question uh, so i think identity is is in your knowledge system you can't you can't have an identity without the knowledge so either to get rid of the identity you have to have uh, immense knowledge like uh, you need to be knowledgeable about everything around you that's one thing or you should not have any knowledge that's another kind of uh, existence or wantedly park all that knowledge somewhere and just sit as is the third state as well so this is my understanding do you think it's yes or no about that yeah but i think there is an inherent assumption that knowledge sphere belongs to the brain or physicality Uh, no right? uh, it appears to be that way uh, no no not like that i mean uh, okay you are you are right as well in a way knowledge belongs to life as an entity mm-hmm. it doesn't matter like see um, if you in, you have intellect or not but um, identity does exist right at least at physical level so we no, no, will no, we are parking that identity as a model acha okay okay no, no let's let's identify the model itself right let's understand the model of identity right uh, so that we can discuss it better so see there is a observer okay now observer himself unless there is a knowledge then we say that observer has no pockets observer or awareness or whatever you call it, it has no pockets meaning it has no state you know there's nowhere to keep anything there so when you have nothing to keep you cannot have knowledge but you can have the power you can have the capability to create a pocket and keep whatever you want there right so the very first pocket that gets created you know if it is like you know just created and the very fact that like you know you start to observe for example uh, and you start to accumulate some content then that's a that is the identity and the next of the observations will happen through that identity what it means is like you know that you use that as a filter to see the rest of the things right so then 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 that starts to become stronger and stronger you know so now we have essentially three layered system there is a pure observer there is a memory which is related to the identity and then rest of the reality which is like whatever you see around and so on right and now this middle thing which is your uh, ego identity or whatever you call as normal i with your accumulated thing it is your self concept now self concept basically means like you know whatever you hold yourself as right like you are such an such a aged person for example and all that kind of memory which is there which of course has got to do with body also because body is a big part of what you think you are right and also the fact that we seem to operate from the, within the body because we are always seeing outside and all right now my point is like you know that it is an arrangement okay now what, what is an arrangement it is just that like you know the observer and all these things work in this particular way okay and it's an arrangement and it it it, it is very useful and important that we, you know this particular arrangement is there because it creates a consistent reality and that consistency is what we see as the life around and how we experience life we all live our lives without much trouble you know and so on and it makes sense for us and so on and so on but the source of the sense is in the in the way we create the story right it is exactly like how the authors create a story now authors cannot write a story with a arbitrary set of characters and arbitrary set of talks and so on right it has to yield some result at the end you have to either feel very happy about that or very sad about that some feelings have to come if there are absolutely no feelings and it's a random thing which is like just a blabberish kind of a thing why would anybody want to see that particular story right so there seems to be a certain direction or objective to whatever is happening even now whatever is there and everything seems to be in service for that now when you want to experiment with these kind of things then you you can take this three layered model and then like you know really experiment to reduce or increase or whatever you want at any layer actually particularly the middle layer and that is when like you know when when you kind of discuss about positive thinking for example so essentially you are directing yourself to you know uh, towards the reality which is like you know uh, goody goody kind of reality by keeping that kind of information within you uh, as opposed to the uh, negative information and now why there is a uh, default by default negative information within us i don't really think it is by default it just so happens that you know I, you are controlled by one of the emotions and fear usually is one of the powerful emotions and if you get controlled by the fear then you will not you are just being unlucky there that's all because you know somebody who is not experienced much of fear and uh, you know many more good experiences in their childhood for example may generally not have a negative thought at all in the first place 
so but one can definitely experiment with that and that's one way of experimenting how you change your own beliefs to kind of reflect in the reality right that is i think one of the topics that you were discussing earlier though i yes, came in much late for that discussion but that's how it kind of uh, places here but more interestingly is that like you know that if you want to take take on like for example gandhi ji you know can you become gandhi ji can you kind of like you know this thing right which is what the movie uh, munna bhai mbb showed right i mean you know you kind of take on gandhi ji role because it simply comes to you kind of a thing in, in that now where is the gandhiness as a knowledge base definitely you didn't have it in your own past because you never probably read also about gandhi ji and all right or maybe one read about it that's what the movie says that you read about it but you are unconsciously reading about it so the knowledge is there but you are not aware of it right now so you feel that it's a new knowledge okay now that of course scientists have to say that because they don't assume the reality they all have a purely physical reality but the physical reality is also appearing in ultimate reality and therefore it's not physical in that sense right it is simply a content it is simply a knowledge and therefore you know there no binding for this middle layer to have a particular knowledge out in the world whatever knowledge is currently there is currently there yes there is like something called brain and it's like a cache and we keep that information but it doesn't have to be taken as a permanent kind of a thing and if one experiments with like you know uh, simple example is gandhi ji because publicly information is known now simple experimentation that one can do is like you know can you meditate on gandhi and like you know really know about the facts without really opening the book and then go and verify those facts whether they were the facts or not so these type of experiments one can always do and then you know uh, and then uh, Uh, one can one can kind of do the only problem that happens is like you know that when you do it as yourself you already have established a set of properties for yourself that i can do this i cannot do this somewhere those have to loosen and therefore your own self concept of what you are has to be like you know changed and uh, so one has to play around with one's own beliefs you have to go into a mental when, state when does, where, okay uh, uh, sir sorry uh-huh. to interrupt you here so the question is like we have i have six more like five more not five actually Oh, I'm almost done. Like we have two more minutes. Very quickly, when do you think we we will get into this? Uh, uh, you know, the question of not adopting to any identity, or at least question is my identity real? So when do you think that happens? No, see, if you looked at my model, right? Everything is made up. Everything is a mechanism. There nothing like you know, uh, nothing is like you know, cast in stone, and therefore you know, totally experimentable. just like you do physical experiments with the physical kind of things you can do mental experiments with the playing with the memory and the beliefs that you have within yourself isn't it and at least the experiments are possible though you may not be able to narrate them to other people and all rather uh, you know you have to just record for yourself and then see for yourself so that seems to be the nature of reality anyway and therefore like you know at some point of time you have to decide that i want to be free of knowledge the free of the accumulated information particularly the cultural information that has been thrust on us right from our childhood and that is a that is something and then it actually can like you know lead you to the so called enlightenment but then what it feels like what it appears like and all is uh, totally debatable because uh, within the sphere of the identity you probably cannot comment upon that uh, though some hints are there here and there and you can always read about what people say about it but to truly experience it uh, you have to simply go there there no other way it seems like beautiful sir i should appreciate your time and uh, thanks a lot for uh, you know uh, sharing your wonderful inputs today though um, this question uh, is amazing to be asked it, but of course this is where the world keeps revolving around and uh, the your model was fantastic as well i hope uh, uh, people who have listened uh, had uh, had some fun and uh, had some uh, thoughtful uh, uh, intake from this conversation which we had and uh, i'll be uploading this conversation to youtube uh, people who don't know me i mind speak and um, i get into conversations with all wonderful people like uh, vinod ji and others in my club as and i'll download that audio put that into youtube as a podcast Awesome thanks a lot for your time Vinod ji um I'll be listening to you in your room in the dimensions now I guess <laughs> thank you sir yes thanks thanks my speak bye yeah. thanks sir thank you sir all right thanks Vinod ji uh, and uh, Mr Cat Chawal ji Nan Hemant Raghu Aman Joy Sunny Raj thanks for uh, listening and I'm closing the room in 1 2 3 namaskar